In this Rambles with Robin and Ruby video, we leave Nagagamasis Provincial Park, drive north along Highway 631 to its junction with Highway 11, then east along Highway 11, which is part of the Trans-Canada Highway, to Rene Brunel Provincial Park. Along the way, we stop at Missanabe Monument, recognizing its Canadian Heritage River status, the Reeser Siding Incident Monument, which marks the site of one of Canada's bloodiest labor incidents. The town of Moonbeam, where we cautiously approach a flying saucer because we don't want to be carried off into outer space. And finally, on to Rene Brunel Provincial Park. Rene Brunel was our staging area before we headed north to geobotanize the area close to the hydroelectric generating stations along the Matagami River. I will also give you a brief overview of the facilities at Rene Brunel Provincial Park, including a chance encounter with an Australian bearded dragon. Enjoy! Along Highway 11, about halfway between the towns of Hearst and Kapiskasing, we stopped at the Missanabe River Monument in the town of Matais, Valcote. The Missanabe River flows north through the boreal forest, across the ancient rocks of the Canadian Shield, and into the James Bay Lowland, where it joins the Moose River before flowing into James Bay. The Moose, Missanabe, and Michipicotten River system, which is located to the south, was the shortest river link between Lake Superior and James Bay. This became an important river highway for the Ojibwe and Cree First Nation people. It later became an important canoe route for the voyageurs during the fur trades of the 1700s and 1800s. With the establishment of Missanabe Provincial Park, this became one of the longest free-flowing protected river stretches in North America. The Missanabe River is also designated as a Canadian Heritage River. Note the sculpture on the site, which was erected in 1997, beside the Missanabe River. The sculpture is entitled Missanabe Voyageur and was created by Denise Heppel from Saint-Jean-Port-Joli in Quebec. Look to the left and you will catch a glimpse of a lonely dinosaur. It is located on the east edge of Matisse. We were told this was a prototype dinosaur made by the same craftsperson who made the dinosaur statues on display at the prehistoric world near Morrisburg, Ontario. That's just a little trivia to help make your day. The Research Siding Incident Monument is located along Highway 11 between the towns of Matisse Valcote and Kapiskasing. During a woodcutter strike in January 1963, conflict arose between unionized striking mill workers and independent farmer settler woodcutters. The strike was triggered by concessions on working conditions and wages demanded by the Spruce Falls Power and Paper Company located in Kappas Casing. In February, a confrontation took place between armed independent farmer settlers who wanted to protect their wood, which was destined for the mill, from striking workers. During the confrontation, 11 union members were shot, three of whom were killed. It is considered to be one of the defining labor conflicts in Canadian history. During our visit, we were lucky to meet Gaetan Carrier at the monument. He and a friend were cutting grass. Gaetan was a child at the time, but he shared his recollections of the event with us. Those recollections have stayed with him for a lifetime. If you're driving along Highway 11 between Capus Casing and Matais Valcote, it's worth stopping at the monument. Just keep in mind that there's very little room at the monument and I would avoid taking a big travel trailer across the Crown Railroad track into the site. As we approach the town of Kapiskasing along Highway 11, you start to see very flat farmland. 
We could devote an entire video to this modern landform, but I will distill the geological history and explanation down to bare bones. This area of flat land is called the Great Clay Belt. It covers about 180,000 square kilometers, or 69,000 square miles, in northeastern Ontario and western part of Quebec. It formed about 8,200 years ago at the end of the Ice Age. You see, during the Ice Age, almost all of Canada and the northern parts of the United States were covered by an ice sheet up to two kilometers in thickness. As the ice sheet melted and retreated to the north, a meltwater lake formed in front of the glacier. That lake is named Glacial Lake Ojibwe. Over hundreds of years, sediments accumulated on the lake bottom. But about 8,200 years ago, Glacial Lake Ojibwe drained away, exposing the lake bottom sediments. These sediments are nutrient rich and suitable for certain types of farming. Governments encourage people to settle the area to farm, but despite the efforts over the years, farming remains a challenge due to the short growing season and harsh winter. Nevertheless, a potential farming future may surface given the changing climate. Our next stop was the small town of Moonbeam, located on Highway 11 east of Kapiskasing. The town is said to have got its name from flashing and falling lights from the sky, seen by early residents. The residents called those lights moonbeams. It's said that northern lights sometimes also accompanied those lights. It's also possible that travelers saw beams of light as they approached the town in the winter. Regardless of its origin, the town name is certainly different. So here we are at Moonbeam, heading back to Campus Casing before going north toward the lowlands. And Moonbeam's an interesting name. You might wonder why. I'm going to show you. So here at Moonbeam is a flying saucer. The story goes that a flying saucer was seen in the area. The flying saucer outside the Tourist Information Centre is also a fitting roadside attraction for a town named Moonbeam. What's the significance of the flying saucer? Well, there were rumours about space aliens and UFO sightings in this area during the 1960s and 1970s. I believe also some mysterious crop circles appeared in the area at that time. Regardless, after some debate, the flying saucer and Kilo, a green alien space person, were adopted by the town as their mascot. And there's the Tourist Information Center. So if you're looking for flying saucers and aliens, Moonbeam's the place to go, apparently. Incidentally, the Tourist Information Center had excellent Wi-Fi for travelers. After our visit with the extraterrestrial flying saucer and mascot Kilo, we turned north at Moonbeam and headed to René Brunel Provincial Park, our destination for that day. For those of you who are sensitive to mosquito and black fly bites, we did this trip in early to mid June 2022 and the female mosquitoes were particularly tenacious in their quest to find warm blood needed to nourish their eggs. Little did we know that the mosquito intensity at René Brunel Provincial Park was nothing compared to what we would experience further north along the Mattagami River. So here at uh, René Brunel Provincial Park, there are a number of electrical sites. This is another example of one. And most are large enough to accommodate a large trailer. So this is the comfort station at uh, René Brunel Provincial Park. Showers, toilet, nice water. Warm water for showers. And playground area for kids. Right next to the comfort station.
Here we get to recycle uh, canned goods, including propane. And the dump station with uh, potable water as well as uh, garbage drop off, recycle. And the potable water actually, uh, there is a boil water advisory, so it's good for. Uh, if you're going to fill your trailer with it, you have to be advised to boil for a minute. This is the Spruce Lowland Trail, we'll just take a quick look. A little buggy this morning. Nice place to log in. And just start the trail. Oh, there goes one. So this is a mother grouse who has some young, and she's uh, defending them by leading me away. There she goes. Into a, we're into a black spruce swamp with uh, lots of moss, black spruce, Labrador tea. Bench to uh, feed the mosquitoes. So that's the mosquito mosquito feeding bench. Lovely carpets of uh, bunchberry, ruby lily. A dragon lizard, is that right? Uh, an Austral Australian bearded dragon. Ah, an Australian bearded dragon. And she loves the loves the sun. She loves UVA, UVB. She loves bugs. Then she's in the right place at the right time of the year. She loves people and music. Her name is Ricky. Ricky, fabulous. But just like that wrestler there, Ricky the dragon. Ah. No, no, I just super. There goes Steve, the owner of the Australian bearded dragon lizard. And Ricky is her name. As I wind down this video, I leave you with some of the flowering wild plants that occur in Rennie Brunel Provincial Park in this part of the northern boreal forest. Enjoy.
So this brings us to the end of this video, the trip from Nagakamissis Provincial Park to Rennie Brunel Provincial Park. If you feel so inclined, please like and subscribe to ensure you see the next leg of the trip as we venture north to the Matogamy and Abitibi rivers at the end of the all-season gravel road. Thanks for watching.